Hey, it's Josh with MapFX, and today I'm gonna to walk you through how to use the MapFX Fantasy Map Builder. It works with Procreate or Photoshop, but today we're gonna to dive into Photoshop. And with it, you can create your own hand-drawn map for your upcoming novel or your next role-playing campaign, but the best part is you don't even need to know how to draw. So let's dive right in. So the first thing that you wanna do is come up here to your brush panel, and once you download the brushes, there should be a folder right here that says map effects. You just want to open that up. And the first thing that we're going to do is draw some coastlines. So open up brushes and you can see that there's a few different kinds of coastlines. We have a coastline with a single wave on the edge of it. And there's also a double for this. We're going to just use the single. And I did create a new layer that we're going to draw our map on and I have it here on the top. So the first thing I'm gonna do though is I did a just a really rough preliminary sketch and I'm going to start actually out here to start drawing my border and then bring it in. And you don't have to be too rough or crazy with it but um, you just wanna vary the edge of the coastline a little bit so that it looks natural. And just following my my rough sketch that I came up with. And then finally we're going to add this little island over here. Okay, perfect. So now make sure that this uh, map layer is selected and we're going to come up to our magic wand tool and just select the ocean area. I'll show you why in a minute. So we can create a new layer and then come back to our brush panel. And now you want to select the ocean hatching brush right here. So now with the just the ocean selected on a new layer, we can begin to paint these hatching lines around our coastline. And you don't have to be too careful with this. It actually looks better if it's a little messy, but you can see that this really speeds up the process because otherwise you would have to be drawing these individual lines. And then with the selection tool, we don't even have to worry about it going onto our, our land masses. Like I said, you kind of want to be a little, a little bit rough with it. And don't worry about um, picking up your brush or letting go of the mouse if you're using a mouse. This is a, a seamless pattern. So you can see you can stop and just keep going and you don't have to worry about it overlapping in a weird way. All right, so that's all done. You can just hit Command D to deselect if you're on a Mac. And we're just gonna merge this down so that it's all still on one layer. All right, so now let's erase some of this outside stuff that we don't need. So you can just take a hard round brush. And one trick that you can do is you wanna click with your mouse, then hold down shift and drag up. And it'll draw a perfectly straight line. It's just a really easy way to um, erase all of this without having to go in really carefully. There we go, it's looking good. All right. So the next thing that we're going to do is start adding some mountains. So we can close this brush panel here and open up mountains. And you can see there's a bunch of different kinds that you have here. You have whole mountain ranges or you have partial mountain ranges, individual mountains, volcanoes, and of course hills. So we're just gonna start with this mountain range here. So all you have to do is just stamp it you can come back here and get some more mountains. We're gonna go with this one. And you can kind of just keep going and string all of these together until you have something that you're happy with. And you can take some of these a little bit smaller mountains and put them next to some of these larger mountains, which will help make it look like the range is kind of tapering into the landscape. It's, it's just a good way to help it look a little bit more natural. And feel free to repeat some of these mountains. You don't have to worry about 
using the same mountain a whole lot. But one thing that you can do is if you come up here into your brush settings and you click flip X under the brush tip shape, it actually reverses the mountain. So then it looks like a whole new illustration. And I'm just gonna speed up the video a little bit as I finish up these mountains and we move on to the next step. Remember to come up here in your brush settings and flip it around so that you can reuse the same brush and keep it fresh. Again, most people aren't going to notice if you repeat it. I'm probably just a little bit more paranoid about it than is reasonable. So I'm pretty happy with that. So now let's come back up here and we can start adding some forests. So we can select this first brush here and I'm gonna create a new layer. Sometimes it's nice to just work on a clean layer in case you wanna move stuff around. It just make, makes it a little bit more flexible. So let's just start stamping some forests in here. And actually I find that um, you can reuse the forest brushes a little bit more than like the mountains. Let's come in here and we're going to add some marshes. So we're gonna come and open up the vegetation folder and let's add this one here. We kind of have this interesting area in the middle and we can just stamp that in there. And I actually don't want this to go quite this far because I'm, I'm wanting to have a river over here. So I'm just going to erase part of this just to help it fit the, the shape of what I want. Okay. And while we're, while we're in this panel, you can also add tufts of grass and combine those to kind of make it look like grassland. It just helps to add just a little bit of personality to um, some of these blank areas of the map. Just fill this in a little bit. All right, that should be good. So the other thing that we can add is some rocks and we have some cliffs that we can include and there's even some crevasses there's all kinds of stuff in here so let's add a couple of small cliff areas just something like that flip the brush around and some over here and let's take this arid seamless texture this is kind of interesting because it allows you to kind of get this um, dry looking area. So it almost looks a bit like a desert. And we're just going to fill in this area over here. And actually we can go back to our vegetation and there's some desert scrub that we can add a few of those in here. Just kind of fill this area out a little bit, make it a little bit more interesting. So let's actually come in here and add these rivers. I probably should have done this earlier, but so you can come back into your brush panel and you can click this river brush. And actually let's merge this down. I'm pretty happy with this and we'll create a new layer over our main map because this is gonna have a little bit of erasing. So let's start over here behind this hill. And we're just gonna weave it through the landscape a little bit. If you're using a Wacom stylus, this brush is a little pressure sensitive, so you can kind of vary the width of it, which is nice. I am using a mouse right now, just to, to show that you can do something like this and just use the mouse. And you wanna make sure that your rivers start um, at a high point, like in the mountains, and then flow down towards the coastlines. You don't want them running through mountain ranges it just it looks really unnatural. Water doesn't flow uphill, which is obvious to say, but sometimes you don't think about it when you're, when you're drawing a map like this. All right, so the one thing that we're gonna do now is we're gonna clean this up a bit. So this is the point where we wanna zoom in. You can see all these little marks where the, um, the river needs to be erased so it looks like it's behind the mountain and also the areas where the rivers come together. 
you can just come in here just with an eraser and clean this up a little bit. You can get pretty perfectionist with this. I, I know that that's definitely my bent, but I'm trying to just do this quickly for you so you can, can see a little bit of the process that you can use. It's looking pretty good, it's starting to look like a map. And we're gonna come up here and start adding some special features. So the first one that we obviously need to add is a compass. And then let's come in here and we're going to add a sea monster, maybe over here, as if he's kind of in that, that cove area. And we're also gonna add a, a nice ship up here because why not? And then let's also add our banner, which is going to appear up here. And remember, we, um, we're on a, a new layer, so it's okay that we're overlapping some of these mountains. If anything, that helps give a little bit of depth. So what you're gonna do is come back onto this map layer and just erase away everywhere the banner overlaps these mountains. So then it looks like these mountains are kind of tucked behind it and it's just a it's a nice simple way to add some depth to your map and i'm going to select the navigation room lines and come over here to the compass and just click right in the middle of that compass you can see it adds all these cool navigation lines now to our map and let's erase away all the lines that we don't need And with these, you don't really want them to draw too much attention to themselves. So what I'm gonna do is make sure that that layer is selected and then come up here to my opacity slider and just bring that down quite a bit. You really just want it to be texture. You don't want it to demand too much of your attention. We'll combine those layers, come up here and create a new layer. And now let's add some icons to our map. So we're gonna come down here and go back to the, the features and we'll start adding some of these map icons. All right, I think that's good. So now let's start adding some labels. So we can select our text tool. And I did include a few free fonts in the pack just to make sure that you had some good basic fonts that work well for maps. So the one that I'm using is this EB Garamond. It's just a nice classic looking font that's really readable. Sometimes with fantasy maps, people try to use ornate fonts and they're really difficult to read, which kind of defeats the purpose of a map. So I just prefer a little bit cleaner fonts. And you can just duplicate this by just hitting Command or Control J. We're gonna just move this over here. And for this last one, you can see that this is going to overlap some of these trees. And you don't want to have it like that because it's just impossible to read. So what we're gonna do is come back down here to your map layer and all you have to do is just erase away anything that overlaps with that place name. So the last thing we need to do is name our map. And you're pretty much done. There's a lot of other brushes that you can try out and features that you can add to your map, but I hope you found it helpful to see how you can take it from beginning to end and honestly do it in the fraction of the time that it would take me to draw the whole thing by hand. Not everybody wants to learn how to draw, and that's why I created this so that anyone could create their own fantasy map for their next novel or role-playing campaign, whatever it is. So if you're interested, be sure to visit mapeffects.co and share your map on Instagram and tag mapeffects so I could check it out. I look forward to seeing what you come up with.